going out and about, sneaking into studios across the BBC, interviewing some famous faces that work in the world of TV and radio. We've been asking about their careers and getting some great advice for our young reporters. Next in line... We have wildlife presenter Liz Bonin in with us today. Who Hi! Who used to present Top of the Pops. So I came up with what's popping with Liz Bonin. <laughs> it's genius. I'm going to use that forevermore. That's why I these. That's why I bought these. <laughs> well, we'll have a little fun. Uh, so I'll do it again. What's popping with Liz Bonin? <laughs> <laughs> my didn't I pop. Yeah, Mine popped late. It, it, it did pop, but I don't know where it went. Cool. Still in What's there, what? popping with Liz Bonin? I'm gonna. I, this is a new show in the making. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. We should get oh, you a new show. Let's do this. We should get you a new show. We'll talk about music, animals, everything that you the love. The whole, the whole thing. Let's yeah. do it. I think we should. Done. What's your day-to-day -day role? Well, it's very varied, which I love. Which is part of the reason why I love what I do. If I'm making a series on the environment or on animal behaviour, I'll spend quite a lot of time before we start filming researching the subject. I'm a real stickler for uh, knowing my topic, so I'll read up on a lot of scientific papers, as much background as possible. In fact, I always ask the researcher, can I get more? And they're like, well, we're not really covering that part of the topic. And I'm like, I don't care. I want to know all about it, because I think it makes me a better reporter and a better interviewer. So there's a lot of prep work. And then you, you work on the script uh, with the team, yeah. and then you head off on the road. So, you know, I'll have some time at home, some time at meetings, and then off we go on the road filming. There's no typical day in this job. How much prep goes into it on your behalf? Because yeah. you know, some presenters, like they'll go in and they'll just present what it is that they're yeah. doing. But for you, is it, I want to know everything I can about the topic. How much do you need to know yeah. about it? Yeah, everybody's different, right? For me, when I started on Bangos The Theory, um, we had an amazing team that really encouraged us to be part of the storytelling process from the beginning. And we were like whittling down lots of complicated, beautifully complex scientific topics for family audience. So we really learned our craft about how to dig into um, the depth of a subject and then make it understandable to a family audience. And I think that was the most amazing training ground for me. And the way I see it, this job really is an extension of my education. So selfishly and personally, I love the process. I, I love, I get a big mug of tea and I sit at my desk and I soak in all this fantastic information from these incredible scientists all around the world who are studying, you know, their, that area of whatever it is they're, they're doing to save the planet. So I love that bit. So I probably, some people might say over prepare, but I really enjoy that part of the job. So yeah, I'm the type of person who just gets really, really stuck in. I feel I'm a, I'm a better presenter as a result. So I first knew you because you used to present a, a music program called Top of the Pops. Back in the day. Back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Oh, early 2000s? Yes. That is, oh, that is Very long time ago. <laughs> but so how did you go from something like Top of the Pops yeah. to then, you know, how did you get into this role now? So my passion was always science. I studied biochemistry um, and then I took a year out. And it's during that year out that a friend of a friend, I was still living in Dublin, was hosting a music award show, or actually producing it and she, she was looking for a host. And I was singing in a band at the time as well, so I was kind of known in Dublin, so they asked me to, to present this programme. And I was on a year out and I thought, yeah, great, what a laugh, it'd be good fun. And one thing led to another and I fell into television in a very roundabout way. And during that time, I learned from great producers who taught me about the beauty of telling stories on television, you know, how, how creative that is. And then after several years of doing that and being hired by Top of the Pops and doing a breakfast show here in the UK as well, I really missed academia and I really missed science and I really wanted to go back and learn more about what it takes to protect the natural world. So I went back to school and did a master's in wild animal biology. But then the, the seed had been sown about, oh, if I could actually communicate what I'm really passionate about, because I've learned how to tell stories as well and I love that process too, wouldn't that be fabulous? Yeah. So I put out the feelers while I was doing my master's and got myself an agent and I just said, look, here's my show reel, it's all entertainment. I fell into telly, you know, I know that this is not science and natural history programming, but if, you know, after this course, I might get some work communicating what I really, really love, let's see what we do together, you know, if we can work together. And one thing led to another and I haven't stopped working. It's been amazing. So you go around the world, where's the best place you've traveled to work? Oh, that's a really difficult question because the planet is so extraordinary. I've been absolutely blessed to see some of the most incredible wildlife that we share this planet with. So if I had to pick my top three, it'd be the Russian Far East, 
I think I watched that one. Did you watch that? Um, it's Narnia, right? It's Narnia. The yeah, it, it looked just like Narnia. Right. First of all, all tiger territories are the most beautiful territories in the world. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because tigers are not, you know, this is not a very scientific thing to say, but they're magical animals. But, you know, the, the Amur tiger, the Siberian tiger in the snow, oh my gosh. Really tough to film there, but one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to. And I met one of the most inspirational scientists I ever met there who's still a good friend of mine and I still look up to. So it was a, an amazing experience. Botswana, the Okavango Delta, is like the best Disney cartoon with all the music and the birds singing and the, you know, the, ah, it's literally magical, but you're kind of, you're kind of squinting your eyes and like, am I really seeing this? It's so beautiful and the water is glittering and the herds of elephants are, are walking past like and all the birds. It's like something out of a Disney cartoon, but it's real life. So that's the most extraordinary place in Africa I've been to so far. And then Galapagos is as magical as people say um, and I went there on a big expedition on this extraordinary research vessel with the top scientists in their fields teaching me what they're researching in Galapagos and for me that's probably the standout trip I've done in my in my job it was incredible Amazing. went to a thousand meters beneath the waves in a little Amazing. submersible and Oh, it was just incredible. You've been to some amazing countries. Yeah. What are the challenges in working in extreme environments? Well, for one thing, in the Russian Far East, it's very, very cold. So we were like working in minus 40 in the snow, and the snow is you know, a, couple, a good few feet up, and you're trying to trudge behind the scientists and keep up with them, and you're setting up camera traps where sometimes you have to take the two layers of gloves that you have on, but you have to be really quick because literally you will get frostbite. Um, so that's quite extreme. And also, if you need to, you know, spend a penny, you have to be very quick. <laughs> and you can't go too far away from the crew because there are tigers in the forest. So it's all those things that you don't really think about when you're sort of filming in the company of wildlife. And that Mother Nature is, is such a powerful, beautiful thing that we've got to treat it with respect. Not only it's wild animals, but just its sheer forces of nature, you know. So we've got a lot of young people who, you know, admire you and would want a job like yours and, you know, making moves like Greta. What are your top tips for them to get into like a job like yours? I think first and foremost, there is no one way. Case in point, I didn't even want to be in television. It's not something I was aspiring to. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, I watched Top of the Pops, and I remember saying to my sister, I want to do that, but I never imagined I'd end up doing it. And, and certainly I never imagined that I'd end up doing, you know, working in television on a subject that is my absolute first love. Um, so, so I think first and foremost, it's all about what, what are you passionate about? Um, I don't think I would encourage anyone to do it just for fame's sake. Um, I think in this day and age, it's all the more important to help communicate the things that are important in life, no matter what the area is. You know, entertainment has its place for really inspiring us and, and giving us hope in another way of, of the beautiful creative capacity of the human race as well. So, but the point is, whatever you love comes first. And then what I've definitely learned is, I mean, it's such an old adage that, you know, things don't come easy, you have to work hard. But I really have learned that over the years. Like, if you really love something, number one, if you're really passionate, and you're prepared to work hard at it. You're not sitting back waiting for things to come to you. You can achieve anything. You can, you can achieve your dreams. So there's some wise words from Liz. And don't forget, if you want to see more content like this, like and subscribe. <laughs>